Hello, this is Virgil Labrador, Editor-in-Chief of Satellite Markets and Research, and we're here at the Avia Satellite Forum 2019 in Singapore with uh, Steve Collar. He's the CEO of SES, and uh, he was the keynote speaker uh, this morning uh, of this conference, which is a major conference with all senior people in the industry here in the Asia-Pacific, leading up to Communication Week. Uh, so uh, before we uh, talk about his keynote, which was really very interesting, uh, by the way, uh, Steve just assumed the position last year in March of uh, 2018. He's moved up in the ranks of uh, SES. Uh, uh, with, he was formerly CEO of O3B, and before that he was with New Skies. Uh, so, uh, uh, Steve, uh, what's your perspective uh, so far of your, uh, having been CEO for a year now? Look, it's uh, I'm loving I'm loving leading SES. I'm mm -hmm. loving leading a company with so much uh, history and tradition, but also this strong feeling like there's a lot more ahead of us than there is behind us. So mm -hmm. uh, we've got a very very strong history in video over the last five years we've developed a strong presence also on the network side of the business mm -hmm. uh, and thinking about where we want to be positioned five years from now mm -hmm. uh, is the really interesting and exciting part of, of the job. Right and you gave a little bit of a uh, glimpse of that in mm -hmm. your keynote and for the benefit of those who aren't here uh, give us uh, the highlights of your keynote because it's really very interesting you know. Yeah look I th my feeling is that this is an industry that's really in transition uh, and an industry which is which has challenges mm -hmm. but also tremendous opportunities mm -hmm. and so my keynote was was more about the opportunities than the threats right. and, and more about um, how we see ourselves moving satellite from niche and expensive to much more uh, broadly available mm -hmm. much more broadly part of the terrestrial uh, ecosystem part mm -hmm. of a networking world mm -hmm. and using what what i consider our superpower which is reach using that superpower for good really focusing on some of the really important things that we achieve as an industry the impact that we have the difference that we make right and i certainly find those things really inspiring and i think it's important not to lose sight of those things right uh, as we kind of continually think about numbers and performance and results all of which are super super important right but impact is also important but i think one key takeaway i got also from your presentation was that you know uh, video you know which has been bandied around this mm. uh, near death mm. you, you 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 seem to have an optimistic view of it mm. yeah no look and i think that's underscored by the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So we carry video to 355 million households, almost a billion people, right. which in and of itself is pretty amazing, right? So right. I think the, 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 the death of video is very, <laughs> very overstated. The right. consumption of linear TV is still pretty much at the level it was five years ago, hasn't right. changed. I think viewing habits are clearly changing and mm -hmm. changing fast. Mm -hmm. For me, one of the keys there, it's, it's about interactivity. It's mm -hmm. about shared experience and creating right. shared experience. When I watch, TV. I want to watch it in the highest possible quality that I can. I want to watch it with others. But now increasingly that experience isn't just watching with others in the room. Right. It's watching with others and sharing that experience online. And uh, that brings another dimension to what we do. Right. And video is still a major part of your business, right? It's You've streamlined your company now with videos and networks. Yeah. So how yeah, do you see so that in the next So few we weeks? have two very, very complementary businesses mm -hmm. in SES Video and SES Networks. We saw, you know, five, ten years ago that our business was going to evolve and that our, our skill sets internally needed to evolve with it. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, video is two-thirds of our business at SES and will continue to be mm -hmm. a very, very large part of what we do. Mm -hmm. But we now have this, uh, this business which is very fast-growing, very mm -hmm. nimble, very agile mm -hmm. in networks where we're delivering end-to-end -end connectivity solutions and that's growing double digits. So we have have this, this great, very profitable, very large, great future visibility of revenues business mm -hmm. on, the, on the video side where right. we're developing new services, but ultimately that's a mature business, right. whereas on the network side we've got all of this fantastic growth coming through. So we've got this nice balance between these two businesses. Right. So, well, this, uh, our publication is uh, very market trends oriented, mm. so talk about the trends that you see have the most impact in your business. Look, there are many. I, I think where we're focused and where we're looking both on the video side and on the network side mm -hmm. is uh, customer success and customer experience. And mm -hmm. those two things kind of go hand in hand. So customer success, we're 
you know, really, really focused on not just trying to deliver the best service that we can to our customers, but trying to make them successful. That means we turn up in front of our customers and, 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 and try and answer two questions. How do we help you grow your revenue or how do we help save your cost, right? Right. Uh, and, and through doing that, what we're aiming to do is really making our customers successful. Mm -hmm. One of the ways we can do that, particularly on the connectivity side, but it's actually on both video and connectivity side, is trying to help them deliver the very best experience to their customers. Mm -hmm. On video, if you look at what Sky are doing with the Qbox, I talked about this a little bit in the key keynote, right. they're really creating fantastic value at the customer edge, and we want to be an integral part of that value chain. Right. Similarly, on the network side, if we can deliver great guest experience to mm -hmm. uh, the guests of cruise lines, our customers, who now go on board you know, cruise ships and want to share their experiences with their friends and family, they want to be online all the time, they want to be, you know, if they've just been diving and seen turtles, they want to be sharing that with their um, you know, with their extended families, and it's the very best marketing that our cruise customers, our, our cruise line customers, can can get because if right. their guests are having a fantastic time and they're telling the world about it, right. it's not just you know, it's not just our cruise customers who are marketing; it's their guests mm -hmm. that are marketing for them, and that's really really important. The same is true for airlines. The same mm -hmm. is true for energy. Actually, the same is true for our government customers, and right. all of our customers are really looking for you know, seamless, frictionless, fantastic experience. They don't care what the technology is, how it's de delivered to them. Mm -hmm. They just want that user experience. Right. Well, you've completed um, uh, over a year now as CEO. Mm. Uh, what are your priorities in the next few years? What can we expect from SCS? I think, look, it's, it's, uh, it's more of the same. And when I say more of the same, it's mm -hmm. really focused around that kind of idea of customer success. I think on the video side, mm -hmm. what we're looking to do there is real, really drive value from our core neighborhoods. We have some of the best neighborhoods in the world. Germany, more than 50% of the population in Germany still get their TV from our neighborhood, essentially. And so. Right. Our job is to continue to deliver value for our customers, drive larger neighborhoods, extend our technical reach, deliver more and more services. Mm -hmm. And on the network side, we've got this really exciting follow-on uh, O3B Constellation, O3B Empower, right. which really takes the O3B concept and the O3B idea and scales it ridiculously. It's mm -hmm. 10 times more capable than the, than the current O3B um, satellite constellation, which is already brand leading, right? right. So we're the only en successful NGSO broadband mm -hmm. constellation. We're delivering fantastic value for our customers today, mm -hmm. and O3B Empower takes it to another level. So that's a couple of years out now, right. and we're working incredibly hard to um, not only you know bring that system to the market, but we when we announced that back in 2017, we really described this mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as an open palette for, mm -hmm. for other partners to really develop solutions across the O3B and Power ecosystem and that is now starting to happen. You'll see mm -hmm. over the course of the next year we'll be making announcements not only about customers but mm -hmm. also technical partners. How are we making sure that we're using the flexibility that O3B and Power brings to deliver the right kinds of services right. to our customers. But how do you see the Leo constellations that are coming up? Uh, you're in the MEO space, Yeah, right? so yeah. look, I think there are a lot of different ways to achieve the same end result. We're mm -hmm. all trying to achieve the same end result. I'm mm -hmm. a, I'm a skeptic when mm -hmm. it comes to Leo, not necessarily mm -hmm. because of the technology or because I, I don't like the idea. I love the idea and I love um, mm -hmm. anyone who's trying to be innovative and creative about delivering solutions to end users. Right. I think the business model is fundamentally challenging. I think it's really difficult to invest, you know, handfuls of billions of dollars in, in, a, in a network that then needs replacing in, mm -hmm. you know, three, five, seven years. Right. So there's this, you know, the amount of capex that needs to be spent to sustain mm -hmm. those networks mm -hmm. is really challenging. So today, I wouldn't be an investor in Leo. I think right. it's the wrong place to deploy mm -hmm. these services from. Right. Um, but I applaud those who were trying mm. to do it. And, uh, and certainly we feel in medium Earth orbit, we've got that right balance between uh, getting close enough to the Earth to deliver low latency services. And again, we were the, f you know, the first to really advocate that latency was really important in networking, right. uh, but far enough away from the Earth that you can do it in an affordable way. And affordability is really, really key. You've got to bring enough bandwidth you right. got to do it at the right kind of price points and you got to deliver the right kind of performance. And we feel with Mio, that's the right spot, the right place to do that from. Right. Well, we've covered a lot of ground there. Steve, uh, anything else you want to add? No, look, other than to just say, I, I, I think 
our industry is at a really important point. It's at a very interesting point. There's a ton of innovation going on. Mm -hmm. I think probably the, our industries and our markets have changed more in the last three years than at any time in the last 30. Right. And, and I look upon that as being a very positive thing. And I think those who really look to those opportunities will be the ones ultimately who will be successful. And I'm, uh, I'm very optimistic uh, that we can be part of that group. Right, well, thank you very much, Steve. And for all the news and information on the global satellite industry, you always have satellite markets and research at www.satellitemarkets.com.